Hello everyone, it is Calvin and Graham from Reed's Distillery bringing you guys uh, the cocktail of the month for May. Yeah, and for this cocktail of the month, we really kind of continue to want to celebrate the summer. It might not be looking like summer today, but we know as the month of May comes, um, it starts to get a little bit warmer. So we want to kind of give some cocktail recipes that could really kind of be useful, easy to make. Um, we're going to be using the shakers today, um, but we wanted to keep it simple for everybody, um, you know, to, to have these kind of cocktail recipes in their back pocket. Yeah, we got a bunch of different sort of fruit to throw into this mix because it uh, it feels like spring and summertime. So we've got uh, got those guys. Uh, so just to kind of break down what you guys would have in your kits, of course, this month is going to be our citrus gin. Citrus gin is awesome. It's all fresh peel of lemon, lime, grapefruit, and orange. Uh, we also have a four pack of this limonada, uh, which is uh, new for us and probably new for you guys as well. So uh, a fun, refreshing way to, uh, to celebrate. We're also gonna have some strawberries, some cranberries, some lemons, some lime, some passion fruit, uh, a little bit of strawberry rimmer, uh, and uh, some lime cocktail mix as well. Um, the uh, You guys will also have a couple of gin gin punches in there. Uh, we don't have recipe cards for them because we've already done the hard work for you guys on those <laughs> ones. Um, and then other, uh, other ingredients that uh, you guys may need from home, some ice, cocktail spoon, a knife to chop up some of our uh, ingredients here. Uh, we've got three different glassware. You can choose uh, with, uh, whatever you would like. Uh, a shaker, uh, a jigger, and, uh, and, and some strainer. ice, of course. We've got a strainer as well. Plenty of ice, because this is gonna be a shaken cocktail, so you're gonna be using sometimes a little bit more ice. Um, so we'll go through, the first one we're gonna be making is the cranberry lime smash. This is a fun one, it's really easy. Um, if you do have cranberries on hand, then it's easy. If you don't, well, you know, it's less. But um, it's really kind of refreshing and really light. Um, and, and we always like to make sure that whenever we're trying cocktails, that we have three different styles, one a little bit more spirit forward, one kind of middle of the road, and one that's just kind of something I could sit on a patio, drink, and enjoy. Um, for this one first, we're gonna be um, dividing up our ingredients and putting that into the shaker. Uh, we have a two-piece shaker here. You might have a three-piece shaker which has a strainer on top, that's fine. Um, so for this one here, it's a 50 mil pour of re, uh, si <laughs> sorry, a citrus gin. And we're gonna be taking half a line Cutting that in half. Okay, so we've got a half line. Then I'm gonna be cutting this into sections as well. And the reason I'm doing this is because we are going to be putting this full line into the cocktail shaker, and we wanna break that line up as much as possible. So now I've got four sections here. That's going right in there. Next up, we're gonna be taking about, I would say 10 cranberries. Sure. Yeah, let's go for it. 10 cranberries. Shake them in, we got. A couple more. That should be good. Perfect. Now, the ice in this cocktail, we're going to be doing what is called a dirty ice pour, where once you've shaken this cocktail, you take the whole contents of it and pour it into your glass. We're using a rocks glass here. So I want to make sure that the amount of ice that we're putting into our cocktail shaker is appropriate for what we have here. Plus, keeping in mind, we are going to be using this to top it up and spritz it at the end. So this, for example, might be a bit too much ice. So I'm going to put some of that back. And even that, maybe a little bit more, just, there we go. So something like that, right? Just a little bit, a little bit less ice than you might traditionally use in your cocktail. So we've got all our ingredients here. We're good to go. This is my favorite. Shaking a cocktail like this, you really wanna break up those ingredients so you can kind of keep going, you know, 30 to 40 seconds. Yeah, absolutely feel free. Um, hope it's not too loud as Graham doing some shaking. Uh, always make sure that ice is gonna be the last ingredient that you're gonna add into your shaker because um, obviously it's going to dilute the longer it sits in there. Uh, so if you misplace an ingredient or you run out of something, you've got to run to the kitchen or to chop up the lime, all of that is precious, all right, all right. <laughs> precious nice time cool. that, uh, that that ice could be melting. So always make sure that ice is the last ingredient uh, to go in. And so I, a kind of rule of thumb for a cocktail like this, it's, you know, once it gets so unbearably cold that it's hold, cold to hold, uh, you know you're pretty much good to go. So I'm gonna pour that all now, again, right into my glass. Perfect. So no strainer needed, right? Like I was saying, we have left here about an inch and a half of room to do a top up. And with that, we're gonna use the limonata, which is going to be um, sort of a lemon Italian soda. These Italian sodas are quite fun to open up. Yeah. Um, you, you kind of pull back and then pull up, okay? Then a little bit of a spritz and you're good to go. This is a fantastic cocktail, um, really refreshing, easy to make. Um, and it balances those kind of cranberry lime tones with a little bit of that lemon hint to it. Absolutely. So you want to sip? I do. Thank yeah, you. There you go. 
Cheers, guys. And Cheers. now we're going to uh, to jump right into our second cocktail here. This is going to be a strawberry gimlet. So a gimlet being a traditional drink of gin and lime juice, uh, we're going to give a little bit of a sort of a summer pick-me-up by adding in uh, some strawberries in our mix as well. Now, in our um, cocktail, we have a couple key ingredients, of course, our gin. We also have our lime cocktail mix. Now, something to keep in mind, lime cocktail mix already has the simple syrup in it. So you don't need to add that, but if you're making a traditional gimlet, you would be. Yeah, so you would add case. a little bit of extra uh, simple syrup, probably about five, maybe 10 mils, yep. maybe 15 if you're using a lot of lime juice just because of that tart and bitterness. So in this case here, we're doing pretty much a 50-50. So 50 mils of gin and 25 mils of lime juice. Now, we're gonna take this a step further. We're gonna make it some, uh, make it a little bit more fun. And we're actually gonna be putting in some strawberries. So we've got uh, our strawberry here. We're gonna be using it in two things. One, garnish, and two, the actual cocktail itself. So using one strawberry, I'm gonna cut that right down the middle and I'm gonna do that twice. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me this beautiful heart shape here. Like Wedge this. right in the middle. Yep, I'm gonna set that aside. That is gonna be used for our garnish. But now I've got a strawberry here that I'm gonna mince up. We're gonna be putting that into the cocktail shaker. We're gonna be shaking that up, kind of breaking that down and releasing those strawberry flavors. Nice, perfect. So I've got now my strawberries, just gonna go right into the shaker there. And now we're going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to let Calvin do the shaking. Yay! <laughs> Give Graham's arms a rest. If yeah, you can just get exactly. me some ice. We don't have to worry about the uh, the level of ice too, too much for this one. Um, but we're going to do a nice seal and a good solid shake. Whenever you're shaking your cocktail shaker, you want to remember to make sure that seal is solid. There's nothing worse when you go to make a cocktail, you start shaking, and it becomes a bit of uh, a mess. Now, before Calvin um, puts the gimlet into here. This is the glass that I'm using. Um, I actually had to take a look into what the uh, the style is, um, but we've always just called this a gimlet glass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be rimming the glass with our strawberry rimmer. So I'm going to take a line and just put that around the edge. Just get it wet enough that it can bind to the rimmer. Okay, so I've got that. Now I'm going to grab the plate and yours should already come in a tin. Oh, there we go. Ooh, doesn't that look beautiful? It does. Right? All right, perfect. Now, what we're gonna do is strain. So Calvin's got a Hawthorne strainer, and he's straining that right in. That looks beautiful. If you look at that. And then, the final step, that garnish. Take a little cut down there, and you're just gonna slide that right there, just like that. Beautiful. That right there is your strawberry gimlet. Gorgeous. Well so beautiful. Yeah. Very nicely done. Yeah. We're very humble. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. And guys, our last drink today, uh, or this month, um, yeah. is going to be, actually second last, because technically you guys have some gin gin punches as well. That's true. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but our, our second last drink is going to be a passion fruit martini. Uh, so this is going to be sort of a little bit of a, uh, of a variant of a classic, uh, you know, martini. Well, we will be doing this with our, um, with our citrus gin. Um, and uh, and uh, throwing in some passion fruit to help kind of brighten up a little bit as well. Now, when it comes to using passion fruit, um, you want to be aware they, they can be a little tough to cut open sometimes. So I find piercing it like that, exactly, just to get the cut started is what you need. And then you've got your passion fruit in there. You can see that there. You want to scoop all that out. Yep, the good stuff. That is good stuff. All right, you scoop that, I scoop this. I, I'll wait. Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all, right. Right. The spoon. all right, so we're scooping that off. Um, kind of a bit of a riff on almost a lychee martini. And we're not using any liqueurs because we are looking for more of a traditional style um, martini, not necessarily one that has a bunch of different liqueurs and sweeting, uh, sweeter tones to it. We want it to be very much gin that's chilled nicely, but with a hint of that passion fruit. And I know there's, there's um, certainly some cocktail enthusiasts uh, out there who are watching this going, you don't shake a martini, you stir a martini, and absolutely you are correct. Uh, but because we've got um, the uh, the addition of that, that, that passion fruit, which which is a little bit denser, we really want to like break that up uh, into the gin. So we are going to shake this one. But normally, uh, yes, always stir your martinis if possible. Now, did we get the gin? In we there? did not get the gin. In there. That's <laughs> an important. That would be a, that'd be a shaken passion fruit. Uh, maybe <laughs> probably almost, still delicious. Yeah, <laughs> almost almost like a gelato. So 50 mils of gin right here. Just right in there. There we go. Perfect. And Calvin's now gonna shake that up. 
Passion fruit is an awesome summer flavor. It's for those of you who haven't used it a lot. It's great because it's got an inherent sweetness and it also has a tart tanginess too. So uh, it's super fun to involve in your cocktails because it kind of brings in um, uh, sort of a complexity of flavors. Now, while Calvin's breaking that open and getting ready to uh, pour it in, two things. One, the more you can have your martini glass already chilled, the better. Yeah, um, throw it into what we should have done at the very beginning of the session. Yeah. Tell, I told you guys, throw put your martini in glasses there. in. Yeah, either put some ice in. I take my martini glasses and five to 10 minutes before I'm, uh, I'm gonna use them, I just put them in the freezer and they come out nice and chilled and it's gonna keep your drinks colder longer, which is important. Yeah, and what you'll see I'm doing here, I'm taking um, a peel of lemon. Um, lemon really helps kind of balance out that passion fruit and that gin. And I'm just gonna express that on the glass, really break open the oils, just like that. There we go. And then take it around the edge. And that's really for the aromatic component of it. And I like to just place it carelessly on the edge. <laughs> All right, so that right there is your passion fruit martini. Absolutely beautiful. Yep. A lot of color. We wanted to bring the color into, into some of these cocktails. And if um, you do get a seed or two from the passion fruit in there, that's absolutely fine. Yep. Uh, they've got a good crunch and, uh, and flavor on them. They are uh, they're perfectly normal to, uh, to ingest, so don't uh, stress too much about that. Yeah, don't worry at all. Well, awesome. we've made some pretty fun cocktails. Yeah, so. those are the three. Just to give you guys a quick rundown of what the gin gin punch is as well. That's gonna be mango juice, lime juice, Angostura bitters, uh, of course, our gin, yeah. uh, and some, uh, some ginger ale to top up and keep refreshing as well. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Looking forward to next month's uh, recipes uh, for these cocktails will be down below in the description. Um, otherwise, thank you guys so much for all the support. We really do appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, and we'll see you guys next month. Cheers. Cheers, guys.